He ran out of gas. Frotch, does he have it in him? Frotch, Taylor staggering and ready to stop it. Taylor trying to catch himself, using his jab, eats a right hand. Hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. Yeah. I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is, and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. No problem, thank you very much. You're welcome, mate. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. <coughs> right, straight down to business. Joe Calzaghi, <coughs> is he going to come out of retirement and fight Carl Froch? I don't know, are you, Joe? Is it a fight we want to see? Yeah, I want to see it. For the simple reason that Joe Calzaghi, 46 and 0, but I think deep, deep down, we all know Joe Calzaghi. He was a bit protected, one not he, I think. I think everything we navigated well with Frank Warren. A bit like Billy Joe Sona's career, whereas he never really got the big fights with Frank, did he? <coughs> Joe got him at the end, didn't he? But Joe Calzaghi won 22 world titles and then had two fights with Hopkins and Jones, who were 40-odd, weren't they? But the point I want to make is... He could have fought Clinton Woods in England instead of Bernard Hopkins. Now, he never got paid for Hopkins fight, did he? Didn't it all end up in a legal battle? And he got paid for Clinton Woods one, though, wasn't he? Were Clinton Woods an harder fight than Hopkins? I don't know, but I agree with Dennis that maybe Joe were there for taking at the time. Mick Hennessy and Frotch, they smelt blood, didn't they? But they didn't get the fight, they had to wait until the 270th day. And Joe vacated on the last day. I've seen the facts. So the point I want to make is this. We're all on boxing scene, wasn't it, all this years ago. Point I want to make is this. A Pete Carl Zaggy against a Pete Carl Frost. It's a pick and fight, isn't it? Right? It's an hard one to pick in it. So that Carl a bit favourite now, wasn't he? 43 year old against 48 year old. He, he'd bit favourite. Different era fighters, aren't they? But I just think that Joe, he never really tested his set and he was that good a world class fighter, elite fighter, but he just didn't, for me, 
fight the Tarvers, the Roy jo uh, Pete Roy Jones, Pete Hopkins, Jermaine Taylor, Carl Frotch, all them sort of guys. It just it just didn't happen for Joe, did it? Only Joe knows about that, but if Joe can put his head down on the pillow at night, that's good, isn't it? Now, I don't want this video to be a slight against Joe Calzaghe, but he might come out of retirement. Money talks, doesn't it? Joe Calzaghe is approaching 50 in the next two years, and he'll be thinking to himself, do you know what? Maybe I shouldn't come back. Maybe I should come back and not wish he had it on when he gets to 60. I don't know. Who's in better shape? My frocks is in better shape, but all these people, all these casuals and gimps from Gimpville Island or all these people who are going to hammer this video, well, actually you will hammer it because I see some of the stuff that Carl gets sent on AFL. Now, if you know Carl like I do, he's a bit, he's a bit dry, isn't he? He's, you know, he's a bit like Roy Keane, isn't he? He's a bit he's like Marmite, you either like him or you don't. You know, he can be a bit frosty, but if you get to know him, he's a nice kid. He's a bit dry, he's actually funny, but who's going to, you know, if you don't like him, who's going to tell him? Nobody's going to say, oh, are they? Because he will ice you. But all these people who abuse him, especially all them front valleys, who send him abuse, and Carl Zaggy's sons even abuse him on social media and say awful things about his wife. Look. He'll probably want to punch holes in Joe and vice versa, then don't get on. You know, him and Groves didn't get on, did they? I don't know what the situation is now. I've heard they've, they've built bridges, but Carl and Joe Calzaghe don't get on and they're probably never going to get on. Too much has gone under the bridge, but I know for a fact, right, that if Joe Calzaghe pipes up and says, let's get it on because we don't get along, that'll be it. Carl will get his diaries out and he'll start jotting everything down and he'll go right I'm going to do the same training camp as I did for Taylor or same one I did for Abraham or same one I did for Bute. He'll do it to the T because he's got a bit of OCD going on. If you go to his house he'll be sweeping gut, sweeping out leaves and that. Paints his own house, washes his car and like he does everything. He, he, he can't sit still. He will do it to the T and he'll set a training camp out. And I'm telling you now, I think it could be a good fight over 10, over 10 rounds for no belt. A pair of them knocking lumps out on each other. Because Joe's timing is not going to be there. And Carl's maybe might not be as tough as he used to be. I mean, he ain't got that nose that he had before now. He's got a Hollywood nose, hasn't he? Now he's gone all, he's gone all film star, hasn't he? Like George Clooney, he's got, you know, he's got his silver wings. And... Uh, you know, he's got his fancy nose, he's, he's a T for all, all, all super starred up, aren't they? So, maybe Rach might not want him to fight, but there's probably 10 million reasons why he might want to fight Joe, and if Joe fights him, there's probably 10 million reasons why he wants to fight, because that's, that'll, that'll be the money touted about, won't it? They're not going to do it for less, are they? It'd be 25 quid, wouldn't it? A Wembley Stadium job, wouldn't it? Or... Knowing Carl, he'd probably go to Cardiff. But it's a massive fight, isn't it, that? I mean, if it does what? Two million buys? You get all Wales buying it, wouldn't you? And, and loads in England. That'll do two million buys at 25 quid. That's 50 million in pot. Then you've got Gate and everything else. You know, any earner would be like that. Oh, oh. You'd have Coogan there, wouldn't you? At IFL like that. Oh, with his big spoon. So... I think it should happen, and uh, I just think it's a shame that Mick Hennessy can't put it on, because I think what they did together were fantastic, Mick signed him from debut and they went all the way, and he's an unsung hero, and sometimes people go those different separate ways, don't they, but the bottom line is this, what they achieved together is great, and what Carl did with him were fantastic, what Carl Zaggy did with Frank Warren were great, but it went sour in the end, didn't it, but who's to say that... Frank Warren won't put that on on BT Sport. Did I say that then? Did I say that then? Did I say that Frank the shoulder roll, Warren, in with the big dint in his head, old dinted. Did I say that dinted might put that on, old fish eyes? 
If you can put that on, old fish eyes, you are the man. You are the man, if you can put that on. Because if you can put Joe Calzaghe's first defence on in Cardiff against a goat herder in Branco Sobot, well, you could put Froch Cal you could put Froch Calzaghe on, can't you, at Cardiff? I mean, Joe Calzaghe's first defence, Branco Sobot. Carl Froch's first defence, Jermaine Taylor in America. Do we see like a pattern here? What do you think, Joe? Just do we see a pattern here? I see a pattern here. And then you go through the records here. Right, and have a look here. We go through we go through each fighter's record. No, I'm not gonna I'm a I'm I'm a Joe. I'm not gonna I'm a Joe, but Joe Calzaghe first he, he won the title against Chris Eubank, right? And that were Chris Eubank's last Oh no, he had two more fights at Cruiserweight after that. Got knocked out in both. Right, here we go. Branco Sobot, first defence. Gimenez, he had eight losses. Robbie Reed, I thought he lost against him. Rick Thornbury, Dave Star, Rioma Sheikha. I mean, oh, Richie Woodall. I mean, Richie Woodall, come on. Mario Vate. Will McIntyre, Charlie Brewer, that's a good win, Charlie Brewer, but he had eight, eight defeats. Miguel Angel Jimenez, Tucker Pudwell, the lorry driver, Byron Mitchell, life and death, Emga McCurchin, Cabaret Salam, I think he dropped him, didn't he? Mario Vate rematch in Germany, but he won't fight Sven Ocker, but he fought a guy who, who, uh, who, got, who he'd knocked out before. Evans Ashida, was that a life and death? I can't remember if Ashira or... Cabri Salam were, were life and death because there's that many stinkers on him. Jeff Lace is a good win. Beaker's a good win. Peter Manfredo, I'm not even going to comment on that. Kessler's a good win. And Hopkins and Jones are over 40. So I don't really. Uh, I can explain it. I think, it, I think it's more of a could do better if tried. I mean, I just think that the big fights didn't happen for him. Tarver didn't happen. Clinton Woods didn't happen. Pete Roy Jones, Pete Hopkins didn't happen. I just Jermaine Taylor didn't happen. I just think that it le it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And maybe maybe he just missed the era. And then I then I look at the Cobra. You know, he don't, Brian McGee didn't happen for Carl Zaggy. Well, before the Cobra fought John Pascal, he did McGee. He did Robin Reed. Now McGee never got the fight with Carl Zaggy. Robin Reed, I thought, beat Carl Zaggy. Carl knocked him out, although it wasn't the Robin Reed who fought Carl Zaggy, so we have to give Robin a bit of credit there. He won the same fighter. John Pascal, 21 and 0. People can say, John Pascal, he never won a medal at Olympics. No, but after he fought Carl Froch and lost, he went on to take Dea Konu and Chad Dawson's O's and ended up Laniel at 175. Andre Du, Olympic bronze medalist. Went on to be IBF interim champion. Fought Kessler, I thought he beat Kessler, same as Al Bernstein by two rounds. Didn't get a decision in Denmark. Joe Calzaghe didn't fight Kessler in Denmark, did he? They paid him extra to come to England. Arthur Abram, only defeat he had were DQ when he knocked Dewell out. Froch knocked him about in Finland. Glenn Johnson, who knocked Roy Jones out, Froch beat him. Andre Ward, two judges had it by two points. Only going on starts. Okay, what would is it? Well, it says here, by two judges by two rounds. I've got it here on box rep. The Bible. Lucian Boutte, Litumba, 30 and 0, 24 by KO. Bookies had him a massive favourite. What happened there? The Cobra cut him down like cheddar cheese. Youssef Mark folded him like a deck chair. IBF number five. He'd, put, he'd be better than, than probably 10 of Carl Zaggy's defences. And then we come to George Groves. Took his out. And he went on to win a world title. The same guy who beat De Gale. But Froch got hammered for not fighting De Gale. Because he was manager. But he retired, didn't he? Joe didn't fight Carl Froch. But he didn't retire. He had two more fights. He only really moved up five pounds, didn't he? Not the full seven. If you go on box rate, right? what one one hundred and seventy three pound wouldn't it? One of them. So the point I'm trying to make is this: I'm not going to be biased. 
I'm going to say, 2008, Joe Calzaghe went to the 270th day and vacated. I think he were there for the taking then. Hopkins and Jones dropped him. It's all about timing, isn't it? We're not on about a Calzaghe from two years previous. We're on about the 08 model. And I think that Calzaghe thought, Frotch, 30-year-old, is seasoned and he's ready for me. Or do I fight somebody that's over early in Jones and Hopkins or Hopkins and Jones? And I think he swerved it. That's my opinion. That's just what I think. That's just what I think. People can say, Porky, that's harsh. You've got to choose me. You're picking him up. Yeah, I'm his mate, but he also knows that I tell you it straight. He doesn't agree with me with everything I say. Don't agree with everything I say. But he's very similar to me, isn't he? He's the Roy Keane of Sky Sports, isn't he? Not, they all sit on fence, don't they, at Sky? They've all got splinters in the backsides, aren't they? Johnny Nelson, Macklin, Darren Barker. God, he's got a fence up his arse, hasn't he, him? Uh, uh, Tony Bellew. God, he's sat on wooden pallets, isn't he, that say Sky Sports on them. I mean, have you heard Tony Bellew's interview on IFL the other day? Tony, what you do, you go like that, you get... You pretend that that's TCP, you go like that, Tony. And then you spit it out. That's what you do, Tony, after after that other day on IFL. It made me feel sick watching it, Tony. It was embarrassing, it were loving about your mate long legs. Look, the point I'm trying to make is, if Eddie Hearn or old fish eyes, the man with a dint in his head, the shoulder roll, Get the emails, do me a favour. Look, if Frank Warren or Eddie Earn can put that fight on, they are the men. So I think it's a good fight. Yeah, it's probably about money and ego and all that. They're not gonna do it for no, are they, Bert? It's a two million buy job, that, in it. I mean, Sky had hyped that to death, wouldn't they? They'd get hammered for it, wouldn't they? They'd get hammered for it, but people would turn up to watch it, wouldn't they? Just like they would Brook Khan, but that's past his sell by date, isn't it? But, this is how boxing's going in it now, it's a circus isn't it? It's a circus, but it's a fight I'd like to see, but it, it, it's a circus and Eddie Earns the ringmaster, isn't it? there's a few other ringmasters. Oh, everybody's a ringmaster at the moment, especially the last seven days. But it's a fight I'd like to see, but the point I want to make is, can you put your head down on that pillow at night, Joe Calzaghe, and say, do you know what? I didn't swear to anybody. Can you do that? Can your sons go out on a Saturday night round where they go drinking, Cardiff or whatever it is, and everybody comes up and they're back slapping them about the dad? Can they honestly say, my dad didn't swear to anybody? Can you look your sons in the eye, Joe Calzaghe, and say, do you know what? I didn't swear to nobody. I'm not so sure. Now, it's nice to have a 46 and old career. But every, all them people who've got undefeated careers, it's rare, isn't it? It's rare. Now, if you look at Tyson Fury's opinion on it, if you go on IFL, you'll see Tyson Fury's opinion on Carl Zaggy's career. And he says, well, there's a lot of them are British world champions, do we thought? In other words, they're like C-class defences. But look at these here. Frotchers. I mean, people say he's quite frugal, don't they? And careful where you pound out, but... He never wasted any training camps, did he? Why does he want to go two week, go and do two week on his own and then 12 week up at EIS with Rob? Or Big Earn, as they call him. Why would he want to do that and then go knock over somebody like Tocker Pudwell or Branko Sobot? He wouldn't do that because he'd look at it as like, this is crazy. It's like having a Ferrari, isn't it? And getting ready to do Le Mans, isn't it? But knowing you've only got enough petrol to do one hour instead of 24 hours. It just doesn't add up, does it? It's just, for me, it's, uh, he got every inch out of his career and I hope he don't fight again, but if he does, and Carl Zaghi takes him up on offer, I'd want to see it. I'd want to see it, but if he beat Carl Zaghi, people would say, well, it's not the Carl Zaghi from 2000 and whatever, eight or, that's what people are saying that they say, well, they got him when they were 48, weren't they? And Frotch were already in shape and blah de blah. And 
they'd, they'd want to do all that, wouldn't they? They'd want to do all that. But that's just boxing, isn't it? It's just uh, Eddie Hearn's put it out there. Frank Warren, BT Sport. Are they coming to the table? Well, we're going to see, aren't we? It's interesting times, isn't it? If they can get that fight made, old Frank is back in the big time, isn't he? He'll be able to put petrol in his roller, won't he? Hey, that's how I look at it. But is it a great fight? Yeah, even now, because it's there's no love lost, is there? They're not they're not going to be mates, are they? I mean, Dylan White and Joshua. It's a loving all of a sudden now, isn't it? But before it were eight, wasn't it? Now it's a loving. Because people are on back foot and people's opinions change, don't they? But I just want to see it. So, oof, God. I could abuse I'm getting here because I said Yui Fury against Pulev could be pay per view. Well, if Dylan White Rivers is, why is Yui, Why can't Yui Pulev not be pay per view? Dylan White and Rivers have never won a never won a belt, have they? I've never won a world title. Yui and Pulev aren't so. What's the difference? Chisora and Dillian pay-per-view Chisora and Osex pay-per-view so why not Yui but that's another story but who cares but I care and I hope that this fight can be made because I want to see it I want to see Froch versus Carl Zaggy but whose name would be first on poster but would they be bothered with getting 10 million each no they say I'm not bothered you go first just hand me the check offer so it's going to be interesting to see if Joe's interested in it. I mean, we're not going to know, are we? But we'll, we'll see, won't we? Would he want to lose that O? I don't know. Does he need the money? <laughs> nah, probably not. <laughs> it's exciting times ahead. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. Or we could do Mr Bean, couldn't we? This is Mr Bean. Hang on a minute. I'll do Mr Bean. I'll leave you with a bean. This is for Steve Wellins. This is for you, Steve Wellins. Are you ready? Ready! This is why we love this boat so much, Johnny. Just had, it, had this in today, so I'm going to add this. This is day after. Dear Russell, Carl Froch was made WBC mandatory on the last day after months of talks and back and forth between NSC Sports and Sports Network, which was Frank Warren's company. Fact. Point two. The WBO stripped Joe Calzaghe after reading his comments about being unable to make £168. Facts. Point three. Calzaghe then wrote a letter to the WBO saying it's the best belt and organisation. Fact. Point four. Carl Zaghi went on to say that he would return to £168 again. Facts. Point five. They wanted the WBO in place for the Pavlik fight versus Carl Zaghi, who was the WBO £160 champion. But Joe Carl Zaghi was shook up after the Hopkins fight and was confiding in people close to him that he was done as a fighter and he wanted a cash out. Fact. That deal, point six, that deal was by, done by Bob Arum and Kelly Pavlik's team and just needed Joe Calzaghi's name on it. Facts. Point seven. Uh, two seconds. Point seven. <clears throat> At the time, Roy Jones was whoring himself in Germany. At ringside at the Marcus Bayer's comeback fight after several years out after being iced by Mikhail Kessler whoring himself when all of a sudden up pops Super Joe Calzaghi Super Joe the man who fights everybody and offers Roy Jones a 50-50 how's about that then boys and girls and I think that more or less concludes the Calzaghi Frotch saga will Joe Calzaghi take it the fight I'm not so sure but there's 10 million reasons why he should. But this is how I look at it. His career could have been better. Yeah, 46 and 0, but he could have been a Ray Lennon, couldn't he? But 
it is what it isn't in it it's boxing in it and we keep saying it don't we these guys they get to the to the main fight but they've made that much money and they don't seem to happen do they just pick and choose and there's a lot of boxers out there at the moment like that they get a comfortable life out of it and why do they want to risk their own well go look at who's got o's out there joshua didn't want to risk his did he but he got clipped didn't he but there's a lot of them out there we owes and they're protecting them so the fans want the fights so peace out the end <laughs> you like that one didn't you right first of all I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing it means a lot to me because uh, we're on this journey together aren't we so anybody got any ideas for the channel fire them over to me porkycorner at mail.com all right shout out to innovation alloys and south yorkshire packaging all right don't forget to subscribe keep on trucking <laughs>